Hello everyone. I hope you guys have been enjoying your weeks. All the rain. Uh, wow, we have a. You guys are all here on time today. That's wonderful. Um, again, this is Miss Dubik, and today we are. It's our last webinar, so today's a little bit relaxed. Um, we are talking a, a lot about what to do if you do want to pursue engineering in school. Um, and really, if you want to pursue any STEM career, um, and the idea kind of, of having to find that balance between extracurriculars, learning those different skills, making contacts, but also keeping good grades, um, and kind of the courses that you should be focusing on, depending on the field that you're interested in. So we, what we spoke about a little bit on Monday, um, and Mr. D is going to speak about this more, is just the idea of algebra-based versus calculus-based engineering. And I mean, that's one example of just the larger picture of, you know, people might think about STEM uh, education and STEM jobs as being only for a very specific kind of student, but that's just not true. And it's a really wide field. It's a, a field that, uh, you know, not all of the population is attracted to um, or is interested in joining. And you in no way have to be to kind of enjoy this class or we're glad that you, even if you are not pursuing that, that you joined us. Um, but we really would uh, you recommend or suggest um, at least looking into these different STEM careers because they can be really rewarding. You guys definitely have the minds for it. So I'm going to take you through some of the top 10 engineering schools in um, the country. I also have another list that I'm going to show you guys. The first list that we're going through, these were, this list came up, uh, U.S. News and World Report. These are the top 10 engineering schools in terms of use, uh, the student experience. So students ranked their school and gave their school a grade based on um, the different experiences. And so this is kind of the list that US News and World Report came up with. And we're just gonna go through um, some of these. MIT, that's, I mean, that's a school that's really well known for math, science, and engineering. Um, and they do have other degrees uh, available there as well. Um, that's something important to keep in mind too. Uh, for example, I'm an applied math major or I was an applied math major. Um, however, my minor was in the humanities. It was poetry. So, you know, college, uh, it's one of those rare opportunities where you can pursue your, your passions uh, surrounded by very intelligent and driven people um, where you can really push yourself to learn. Uh, so maybe you want to go to school for computer science but you're also really interested in history. That's something to keep in, in mind when you're when you're choosing a school. Also, definitely tuition and fees, setting, um, how large it is. 4,000 is pretty small. Stanford University, yeah, these are pretty well known. They're really known for their research projects that they go on in the technology setting, suburban setting, um, out west, a little bit larger. California Institute of Technology, get out west. Uh, when they talk about tuition and fees, again, that's for one year. Pricey. Uh, the enrollment is small, though. I mean, this is incredibly low student to faculty ratio, three to one. Incredibly low. Um, I mean, that is just. That boggles my mind. I go to a school of 16,000. So that'd be really amazing. Uh, really work one-on-one -on -one with your professors, but also think about the student life that you'd like. You know, maybe that's perfect for you. Maybe you like small schools. Maybe not so much. All right, University of California, Berkeley. So California is a big um, place for technology schools. If you're in-state, it's a very affordable um, 
tuition in terms, you know, there are a lot of scholarships and opportunities in STEM education, especially. So as some of these numbers are daunting, um, just know that if you guys are really into entering these contests, coming up with these ideas, there are opportunities for you to go to these schools. These schools are looking for bright individuals to kind of take under their wing. Universe, uh, Berkeley is great. They have a huge, huge, huge uh, emphasis on student organizations. So you could, if you're really into the environment, you know, if you're really into pretty much anything, um, robotics, you can get involved that way. I'm going to jump out, make sure no one has any questions. No. Guys, if you have questions at any point, just let me know. Um, I might not be an expert on all of these schools, but I know that the idea of trying to pick that right school for you can be daunting. Um, and as someone who has maybe recently applied, um, I can try to help in whatever way. And Mr. D, jump in whenever. I will do just that. Georgia when Institute. I was at... Go ahead, Denise. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll add to Georgia Institute. Okay. Georgia Institute of Technology. So that's going to be on the East Coast, maybe a little bit closer for most of us um, than all the way out in California or up in Boston. Um, again, it's that idea of uh, in-state is a lot uh, less expensive. Um, and if you guys were thinking about an in-state engineering school in North Carolina, this is not on the list, but NC State is a great school a really, really, really strong math program as well as a really strong engineering program. They also, I was there, um, Lego does a lot with them. And I did, they do a lot with robotics. I'm um, surprised they're not muted. I'm sorry, let me unmute. Unmuted. Say again, Denise, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I said, I'm surprised they're not on the list. Honestly, it's a great school. They're, they're a fabulous school and they have, um, a very strong robotics program and at any of these schools now when you think about going to an engineering program you better know that you really want to be an engineer though I would say that on all of these I think Denise would agree someplace like Georgia Institute of Technology go there because you want to do the math you want to do the engineering it's not a place I would necessarily go to if I'm not sure what I want to do and I want to be a generalist uh, Georgia Institute of Technology or MIT are not the places for that you haven't I, gotten to that school up north yet, have you? Not yet. <laughs> Your favorite. Yeah. I would All agree. Right. It's really important. Um, we'll talk about this later, too. Uh, Mr. D, we already spoke about it a little bit. But just there are other options. If you, you know, th these 10 schools are definitely, if you are invested in getting that engineering degree, and most of these, I mean, these are going to be the theoretical. This is going to be the calculus-based uh, sort of pathway. Um, all right, so Urbana Champagne. Uh, this is a very selective admission um, for this program um, in Illinois. It, I have, might not be as well known as MIT um, or Berkeley, but it is very difficult to get in. A similar tuition and fees that we've been seeing, um, much larger class size, much larger class size, which is interesting because it is a very selective admission. Um, this must be for the whole school and not just the technology program. <laughs> All right, university, that school up north, that's a perfect choice if you can't get into Ohio State. So if you really have to go, and you can't get into Ohio State, then go to that school. Can you tell we're huge rivals? <laughs> I don't think I could have put Duke on this list. Yeah. They have a school. <laughs> they have engineering. <laughs> Duke? Yeah. No, Duke does not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if they did, I would not have added them. Um. And that's another thing to keep in mind. If you are thinking like, maybe I'll do engineering, but I've always wanted to go to this school, so I think I'm 
um, hopefully you will have already checked into this, but it is, it is not a program offered at, at um, many liberal arts colleges. It's a very specific program um, as opposed to, you know, kind of getting a business major and just taking more general classes. With engineering, it's going to be uh, really focused, I would say. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. D, but you're going to be learning a lot of the hands-on skills that you'll need to know. Um, it's going to be more directed as opposed to, like, you get to choose your classes. Um, if you're talking about a general college education, they allow you tons of flexibility about what you take. Yeah. If you're in a engineering program per se, it's look, guys. Everybody's taking a lot of math, a lot of physics. You know, you'll get some variability in which of the engineering electives you like, but it's very focused on what's going on. In this modern days, they're going to want you to co-op. But when we get done with these schools, I have three schools here listed that are the top community college, or if you're thinking maybe algebra-based engineering. But, oh, you know, calculus doesn't do it. So I've got three schools here because we've got uh, Dr. Pagan's listening in uh, with us today, too. So Great. Okay. Carnegie Mellon. Um, this one is right. another one that has that small enrollment, uh, very well known. Tremendous robotics. Tremendous. Excellent. Those in Georgia Tech would be the two right off the top of my head. Uh, Cornell, um, again, very well known. This one has a, a research uh, centers for nanotechnology, super, community, uh, super computing. What's great with research is you have that opportunity to work really uh, hands-on with your professors if that's what you are interested in doing. Um, if you're interested in theory and research, that that's incredible to have that opportunity. It can also, at some levels, be frustrating to have just um, kind of research scientists as opposed to uh, professors trained in teaching. That's my advice on that. Um, Princeton has this incredible option it, they have a no loan policy so if you are accepted to princeton um they will find a way to get you there uh so they they don't instead of giving loans they give grants um which they were the first university to do that and still one of very few but it is as you can imagine very difficult um very selective to get into princeton Mr. D, do you know much about Princeton's engineering program? Um, it's like the reputation of Princeton alone it makes it a very strong program. Right. Um, when we get I done with it, it, you know, that's what I think you've got more going on. And I, I, Princeton is uh, compared to some of these other schools, they all jump out at you as, you know, wow, exactly. Carnegie Mellon, Georgia yeah. Tech, MIT. Stanford, uh, you know, Stanford is now known as billionaire U because of all the money there. But once you're done with these schools, I want to add in the importance that you don't have to go to a name brand school and do very well. Right. Um, and it's more. really important when you're looking at some of these tuition and fees that you really think about that, um, considering, well, if I go to NC State, I'm going to come out with a lot less loans than if I go somewhere else. Just another thing to keep in mind. Or Princeton, the no loan policy. Purdue, again, highly selective. Uh, In-state is going to be a lot less than that out-of-state. Most of these are averaging around 30,000, a much larger enrollment size. Um, and then this last one here is the University of Texas. Austin, Texas would be an amazing place to go to school. Um, I do know that they have a an incredible uh, engineering or just math and engineering department. Um, and this is like a really big Greek population. So if that's kind of the student experience that you are interested in, what's what's nice about um, doing like the sorority or the fraternity scene, if that's something that you're interested in, is a lot of times they'll have so they'll have a fraternity just for engineers where you'll kind of be in a fraternity with people that are in your classes. And it's a great way to get to know each other um, and to get to know other engineers 
that went to University of Texas um, when you're looking for those internships. So that's something to consider. And that's the end of my list, Mr. Judy. Um, I'm going to send out this link. This is the top 50 schools uh, in terms of Business Insider for you guys to have later if you are interested. I'll mute my all right. Um, I wanted to add, add something on to this because I feel passionate about this. I, as you all know, I, I teach at a prep school during the regular school day hours. And I've often, uh, not yet, there's no reason to show my screen. I'm going to say not yet. All right. So, Denise, you just the screen's going to stay on you. Um, I feel passionate about this because I've heard this for years about um, the right school. You know what the right school is, folks? The right school is the school that you go to and that you check into, that you can get into, that your skills, your choices match theirs. Think of a couple things here you consider. Um, you want to go to a school where you're so incredibly in debt the entire time, you, you need to worry constantly about how you're going to pay for it. Do you want to go to a school that's got a great reputation, but you're 500 miles away from home and you're a person that likes to be home? Third, do you want to go into a school where maybe you have the grades that get you just barely in it? Well, then you're going to be the small fish in a big pond. Next, a lot of these reputations are because they've always been here. If you want to go into NASCAR, it's, it's getting the reputation. So let's talk about some things. If they, those are the top 10, right? That's not the top 10 textile engineering schools because it was the top 10 textile engineering schools. NC State would be there because we have a long history of textiles in the state. I'll give you another example. If you wanted automobile racing chassis setup, uh, UNC Charlotte would have to be in that top 10 list. NASCAR spent a lot of time, a lot of effort. we got a lot of top people at UNC Charlotte that are very involved in racing. And you would need to be thinking about some British colleges, too, for the way. They're very big in the Formula One. So don't get caught up. And, and then the final thing, let me another thing I want to add on this, too, before I finish up. Um, don't think, oh, my gosh, I got into this school, and it's a party school. Or you'll hear that. Let me tell you something. You graduate any of these engineering programs you're going into, the any Eng their English programs, I don't care what it is, they know more than you do. You're going to learn something there. So don't worry, oh, I'm going to go to this college. It's an easy college. I already know what's on. That ain't happening. And as far as you're going into the engineering technical programs, um, they're going to be very demanding. So your party school is a party school if you make it a party school. Um, I think you want to have a, a, a your, your beyond high school or beyond homeschooling education we've got, when you go to school, it should have some enjoyable moments in it. If the student makes it the party school or not, I guarantee you, um, I'll use my alma mater. People, some people would say, oh, Ohio State's a party school. Uh, if you're studying chem -E, I guarantee you it wasn't a party school. If you're going on to do programming, uh, NC State is, or Chapel Hill, or you name the school, is not a party school if you're studying programming because you got to work your tail off of it. And for that matter, um, we're going to talk here real quick. If you say to yourself, you know what, calculus is my bag, or I want to get in using my hands immediately, I want to get a job, I'm not sure the whole four-year thing works for me. I, I like to learn, but I don't like school, sitting still in school. That's great. I'm going to tell you about three programs that are shorter that probably get your hands, but they're not party schools, and they're certainly not. There's sometimes sense, I think, with these schools of, well, the remediation. I couldn't go there. And, of course, you know I've talked about in the past. We have a treasure in CPCC. Uh, the more I get to know their program, the more blown away I am. Right now, if you're a member of CPCC and you want to go into one of the best manufacturing facilities where you can go out and build and do things, uh, the head of their department will allow you in there at 1030 at night or 11 o'clock and go in and work on stuff. It's very, it's very student-centered. So we have CPCC and their engineering program. You can go the formal calculus, 
get you save yourselves a lot of money, then go off to NC State or go to one of these other four-year programs. Um, you could also, though, if calculation is it, you can go in the engineering tech and go the algebra route. Now, I did learn from a CPCC that you got to kind of pick one or the other. It's You can't go, I'll do algebra to begin with and come back. You would have to start all the way over. There are um, So here, if you're living in the Charlotte area and you're thinking that route, you really need to check into it. Now, there are two other places. There is um, Tidewater in Virginia. A community college does another excellent job. So if you got family up there or something, you're thinking, eh, I want to get away from CPCC. I might not go to CPCC because it's nearby, but I got family in Virginia. You go up Tidewater, establish residency there. And then there's Monroe Community, and that's in New York. And that's another one. That's an upper tier community college, just like uh, Tidewater and CPCC. Again, CPCC, 70,000 students, and 70% 70 of them have four year degrees already that attend that school. So when you're looking to get going on your career, that's a great place. And if you are like I am, and 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 frankly, I'm very proud of this fact, Denise provided a lot of, made a lot of money to help herself through college. Um, it's an economical, very economical to start at CPCC, go that first two years, get a really solid foundation in engineering, and then go on to NC State and save a ton of money. And the feedback I'm getting from Dr. Fagan and the other folks at CPCC is their kids that go on to NC State do extremely well because they've already they know what they're there. They've gotten a lot of good, a lot of good training from CPCC staff. They know what to expect. They know what to warn. Give them a heads up what's coming. And so when they hit NC State, they they hit the ball running. So that's really a couple things. It's the best colleges in the world. It's the best one for you, not what somebody puts on a list somewhere. And once you get your degree, folks, and you have your first job, nobody cares where you went to school. All right? I, I, don't, I don't care about your GPA anymore. I've said good teachers that came from top Ivy League schools. I've had poor teachers that have come from Ivy League schools. I've had great teachers come from state schools. And I've had poor teachers come from state schools. I think... What we care about after you get that first job is how did you do on that job. All right, Denise. If it's all right with you, oh, I'll go great. ahead and mute myself. Sorry, I was, I was muted. Uh, so no, we no. have, um, we're going to do a short break before we go back into this um, activity that we wanted you guys to see. It's just a resource on different engineering careers and kind of what they require. We also um, have a parody of the song Thrift Shop um, that an actual engineering, kind of like a fraternity um, at a school created. I'm going to show the humor. It's definitely a party thing what, here. What, 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 I'm gonna type some code, only got 20 hours this semester, Cal calculating, see me innovating, this is engineering. Nah, walk into the room like, what up, I got a big test, I'm just the baddest engineer in the Midwest, TI-89, now don't be a hater, nope. my teacher's like, girl, that's a calculator. Staying up, who needs sleep, I got plenty of caffeine, working on math, maybe later some programming, nope. maybe I'll just go get an IU degree, nah. I'm a boiler maker. Shouldn't make it easy. Stress. But hey, I'll be loaded someday. Coons or Daltons or having nightmares in the lecture hall. Yeah. Passing up on that integral, even Newton can't solve it. Oh, play some hell later, man. I'm reading and writing and making some ramen because I'm hella hungry and it's 1 a.m. Oh, I'm going to get an internship. I'm going to get an internship. No, for real. Where's my roommate? Can I print my resume? Thank you. Classy suit coat with some new trousers. Leaving college job fair with some good offers. They had a used textbook. I bought a used textbook. I opened it to study. Then I got on Facebook. <laughs> 
I know, I know my box be my turbo for Julie ain't got nothing on the swing shape hair flow. I could pass a hard class, A plus, time at that. The upper class and be like, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna type some code, only got 20 hours this semester. Cal calculating, see me innovating. Yeah, this is engineering. All right, I'm gonna type some code, only got 20 hours this semester. Cal calculating, see me innovating. This is engineering. What you know about nuclear power and clean air? What you knowin' about writing that new software? We're SpaceX, we're NASA, we're blasting right off the surface. One man's sky, that's another man's office. Engineering, we're designing your next smartphone right now. It's baby, it's us who know how to. I'm on my laptop, you can find me using Unix. I'm on that on that server, searching for connection. Unix. Your problem, your pattern, the system you're solving, you're getting all those pretty ladies every time because you're all that engineer. You rock and berries, no you're not, you're an engineer. You hit the party and they stop for that engineer. They'd be like, oh, it's Katia, it's all tight. I'm like, yo, that's 80,000 for some software. What? Corporate edition, the system vector edition. 80,000 for some software that's just an expensive mouse. Silly. I call that making sketches and prints. Silly. I call that bottle making for a business. Hey, the cat's hella dope. But having the same one as major companies in the world is a hella pro. Biomed, come take a look through my microscope. Want to get creative in your life? Then get up and go. Then get up and go. Physics! Hi, you socks! I'm gonna type some code, only got 20 hours this semester, oh. Cal calculating, see me innovating, this is engineering, oh. check out the pyramids, that wall the Chinese did, or go down to some hedge, engineering for the win, drive down the golden gate, right. swim through the Wait, Apollo 11, Space. engineering for the win. Ow. I'm gonna type some code, only got 20 hours this semester. Cal calculating, see me innovating, this is engineering. <laughs> Did you use Wolfram Alpha? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that really, really serious documentary on engineering life as a student. Um, okay, so what we are getting into now, we actually uh, had this, it's, it's a game that we, uh, that I found for our middle school classes. So when you look at it, it might look a little young, but what's actually there is this incredible resource um so when you you know get onto the uh page you see up here um explore stem careers it's kind of these two options you can explore or this is how you um select the one to actually play the game but up in this explore stem careers uh kind of scroll through you can see all of these different STEM career paths, and when you select one, again, this is in the explore bar, they have so much information on them. Um, what that person does, how, you know, tips and advice on how you become a, a vet. And this is, um, it starts in seventh grade. You know, your, um, your character in the game starts in seventh grade, and you have to make the right choices um, all the way up until you know, after they go through that four, four year veterinary school. So this is really talking about, you're still in school, um, you're still studying, what do you need to do? Not just to be a vet, but for any of these. Let me jump out of here. Oh, I don't think it's gonna. Right, so they have just so many different career options. So let's say I wanted to be oh, I know one that you might not even think about an athletic trainer. So first, you learn a little bit about what the athletic trainers do. Um, they're healthcare professionals who work with athletes dancers, soldiers, right? And this just talks a little bit more about, you know, 
uh, rehabilitation, what they do there. They also have related careers. So maybe you're not an athletic trainer, you end up as an exercise physiologist or a physician assistant. Um, occupational therapy is actually a very interesting field. And also, these are tips on what you would need to do to become an athletic trainer. So you are going to have to attend a four-year college. Some, for some of these careers, they let you know that you actually only have to get a two-year degree. Um, and you, this is the major you're going to have to get. Try to complete internships while you're still in college during the summers. Then you're going to have to get a master's. Um, and there are certi uh, certification exams. But they also they have advice. They also have activities to do that will look really good on your resume. Um, you know, everything from learning first aid to coaching a kids sports team. And they even have like movies and books to read. This is, it's an incredible resource. Interviews from athletic trainers, other places to get more information. Um, I really wish I had had this to kind of see all of these different jobs that, you know, you feel distant from. You're not exactly sure. You know people in spec buildings, but you know kind of what goes more into that. Um, some of them don't have as much information. Right. So and then you can choose. They have a more limited selection for the game. Um, but if you guys want to try out the game, I won't show you too much. Uh, you can choose that. So let's say I chose epidemiologist. Uh, here are kind of the your goals. Um, you don't need any experience, but by 2028, so Lauren is a seventh grader now, it's 2013. By 2028, she has to have her master's in public health so that she be can become an epidemiologist and then get a doctorate. So these are passions um, and skills that she needs to have. Right now, you can see she starts out very low. Um, this is kind of her math and science skill right now. And as you go through, you say, well, she has an A in math, so we want to take advanced math. And then you have the option to choose these different uh, opportunities for her. So, you know, see that little microscope? That's great. So that'll increase some of that passion there and also skills. And you want to click those study boosts. All right, so the game is a little bit, um, it's a simple game, but really that resource is incredible. All right, so I'm sending that out to you guys. I will be here. Uh, I'm going to let you guys kind of explore that for a little bit. Um, please message me or raise your hand if you have any questions you want to talk more about. Um, you know, applying for that, what the experience is actually like day to day um, with the engineering. I, I did not get an engineering degree. I was not in an engineering program, but applied mathematics in many ways is similar combination of physics, math, and computer science. So I'm here if you guys have any questions. Go ahead and explore that. Um, at about 5.15 or 5.20, I want to show you guys one more cool resource that the, that the web has. We can have um, some background music while you guys. Another song from that group while you guys play. You don't have to watch the video.
Some nights I stay up doing iterations. Some nights my robot won't move. Some nights I wish that I would have done the bonus. Some nights I scream at LabVIEW. But I still take notes, I still stay awake. No more, I'm still not sure about flowcharts. some sleep tonight. The roommate knows that last night I was up until, up until 4 a.m. and the next activity. Well, some nights I wish that this all would end, cause I could use some friends for a change. And some nights I'm scared of this anyway. Make sure that I swipe in, that I swipe in. But I still take love, I still stay awake. Oh, Lord, I'm still not sure about no charts. of our background music, I guess. So we got like five more minutes. You guys, you know that.
you guys as you and gals as you're working on this um i just want to throw some out um tomorrow on the charlotte folks tuesday uh, last night i should say i think all the huntersville folks uh, got the robots finished robots listen to that rocket launchers finished i know we got to get a couple of plugs battery plugs for some folks uh tomorrow the other high school folks that come to Charlotte, come on in at, like we do on, and we may end up staying about an hour later. Though guys got through it pretty quickly, so we'll we'll see. Um, so plan on launch, you bring your rocket launchers. We get done a little bit early, we'll make rockets and we'll launch. Said launch on rocket launchers. I'm feeling pretty good about that. We're gonna finish up that lab. You go ahead and put your rocket, finish up putting your rocket launchers together and launching some rockets. So try to make it tomorrow. That's not one to miss, especially it's kind of our last lab, too. So I'd hate to have you not there for that. So just remember, we're coming. We're going to build our rocket launchers. You're going to put them all together. That way you'll understand how to prepare it if you need to down the road. Okay? I'll mute myself, Denise. All right, so it's 5.15, uh, almost, we're one minute away. Um, and if you guys want to keep going through this game, I really recommend that you spend some time, um, if not, at least have this resource available to look through these careers. It's definitely, uh, you know, there are, are lots of different ways to research about careers you're interested in, but very few websites that offer this much information on such a ver large variety. Kind of right at your fingertips so definitely if you are interested in that keep playing um i wanted we wanted uh, also to leave um this is the last webinar but wanted to to leave on a little bit um on a fun note we thought you would enjoy this game real fast it deals with solar power and i know we haven't dealt a lot with energy hopefully uh for the next webinar semester uh, energy is going to be Something more we get into um, energy and photonics. So the way solar panels work, they're taking photons from that, the sun and converting them into electricity. And that um, is what's going on in these solar cells. Uh, and so we're kind of missing that portion in this diagram. So then that is being transferred into electric current, which is then um, stored in this charge controller or convert it in this charge controller either into a battery system or and, and or um, an inverter. So that battery system is just going to be regular DC power or that AC power. So this is just a really small introduction for uh, this uh, fun game where you actually learn more about solar. Uh, it is available. You can just play it directly off of the website. It did not work for me, so I actually downloaded it. Um, and it's just a game where you get to kind of uh, weigh, so, uh, weigh your best between having a really heavy car versus having more solar panels, having more battery space, and, and mess around with that. I thought you guys would enjoy that. I'll send that out as well. And again, you can just play the Shockwave version. I had more success downloading it. Kind of a taste for what would be coming up next semester. And folks, uh, as you're working on the game, downloading it and playing, and we just wanted to address, again, um, we'll be in touch. I'm going to leave Ed Moto on. We're going to be posting things. Uh, we're probably going to do something this summer for a half day just for more giggles and laughs, work on something. For example, the Huntersville Middle School kids have decided they want to do a zombie apocalypse, engineering the zombie apocalypse afternoon. 
So if you all come up with some themes there you would like to do, we can do some physical programming, uh, or we can do some mechanical stuff. Whatever you'd like to do, we can go out to Lanton and maybe meet, you know, meet up for the Huntersville group. We'll go out and meet somewhere up there, or meet maybe somewhere in between the Latin Charlotte people. We can meet in the Latin somewhere and uh, work in the lab and do some things. Or for that matter, Huntersville folks, if you don't mind driving down one time, there's a lot more going on in the lab. We can go ahead and play with there. I have those Tetrix robots. We can come back for those people who didn't do it in the fall. We can do it that way. All right. But uh, stay on your Edmodo. We're going to keep posting things. We'll see jobs in schools. And frankly, I post a lot more once in between classes because I have the time to do that. Okay, folks, I'm Denise is staying on. I'm going to jump off. I will see you in lab, and uh, I will see you again, I'm sure. So it's been a real, in case for some reason I don't talk to you, I, I just want to say again, it's been a pleasure and a treat to get to meet all of you all and work on it. You all have very bright futures. I, I'm very excited to hear from you and what you end up doing down the road. And if I can help with any kind of college stuff, just let me know. All right? Oh, one last thing here. I just remembered this. Let me see if I muted myself here. That's probably what I just did. Oh, I almost muted myself. Parker gave me something to post. He did very well in his math video. So please go ahead. I have it um, up on my screen right now. All right, great. Go ahead and vote for Parker's video. All right. That would be my big pitch. Vote for Parker's video. He's already up to 13 votes. We can do better than that for him. All right. I will talk to you all later. Denise is still on, but I'm going to leave right now, guys.
All right, guys, it is almost that time. Um, I've really enjoyed the opportunity to work with you uh, the, these past couple weeks. Um, and I know Mr. Diaz and the same. It's been really great to, to, yeah, to work with you guys, especially working with the middle school guys. I know um, they're very much looking forward to getting to, to do the sort of stuff that Mr. D lets you guys do. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, hopefully we'll stay in touch uh, through Edmodo over the summer. Um, I hope not too many of you have a lot of finals to worry about, but if you do, good luck. And the sooner you get through with them, the sooner summer starts. So uh, again, let us know if you have any questions. Um, it's been wonderful to work with you. And hopefully we will stay in touch.